Hello, my name is Jonathan Wagner with ChooseToBeHealthy.com, an online health food store. And I have the distinct opportunity to introduce you to a natural food historian named of Chris Barr. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. <laughs> uh, Chris Barr is uh, a longtime friend of, of, of mine and, uh, and my father who founded this company back in 1997. In fact, I first met Chris at a supplement show out in uh, Anaheim, California, I believe. I'm not 100%, it may have been Las Vegas show as well. Um, Chris is, is big into uh, whole food nutrients. In fact, he's got, I believe, almost five decades of... of well, through five decades, through five, starting in the 70s. Starting in the 70s of, of the history, really, of um, certain nutrients that are so vital to our health. Um, one of the things that I remember out in the health food show was uh, we walked on. You know, these health food shows, folks, are huge, massive. We walked out, and this was again the first time I'd met Chris through my father, Chuck Wagner. And uh, he said, Look around, Jonathan. Vast majority of these products are useless. But I really don't want our government telling us what we can and can't take. Yes. I believe uh, is something to that point. But um, one thing we want to talk about today is uh, the nutrient chromium. GTF chromium, and there's been a lot of talk, uh, people Google uh, chromium and with type 2 diabetes, and unfortunately a vast majority of Americans get on the wrong type of chromium, they get on like a chromium picotate or picolinate, and I'd like to bring you in now because this is the master of, uh, of whole food nutrients and what we're missing out on. So Chris, if you could kind of give us a little more of a background uh, uh, of where you started, and, and then we're going to get quickly into uh, our, our first nutrient, which would be chromium, GTF chromium. Well, so Jonathan, straight. chromium was one of the very last nutrients to be identified. In fact, the time that it was identified as an essential nutrient, uh, 1959, it was one of the very last ones. Up until then, it was simply identified as uh, it was used to make chrome bumpers, uh, faucets, to make things shiny. And in the process of manufacturing, there was a type of chromium that came through that called hexavalent chromium, which is highly toxic. So up until 1959, it was just something that was uh, a toxic element in a certain form that doesn't exist in nature. It only occurs through uh, the manufacturing process. So no one thought anything of it. Uh, and uh, Dr. Klaus Schwartz, with his assistant, Dr. Walter Mertz, at the National Institutes of Health and the US government uh, were engaged in liver studies. And uh, long story short, they found out that the liver will not function in the absence of chromium, uh, which made it an essential nutrient. And they found it had a specific necessity for sugar metabolism. Well, Dr. Mertz, the assistant, uh, declared, we found the cause of diabetes. Uh, because I mean, blood sugar, chromium was established as essential nutrition-wise for blood sugar metabolism, and diabetes is a disorder of blood sugar metabolism. Uh, it's responsible, it's actually a cofactor with insulin, whereas almost everybody, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who doesn't know insulin is you know part of blood sugar, but hardly anybody knows that's a cofactor with this element chromium. Chromium actually facilitates sugar from insulin's like a transport mechanism, like a truck or a rail car. Um, and the, G, the molecule GTF, glucose tolerance factor, which is a significantly chromium containing molecule, would be like a dock worker. Uh, you know, the rail car or the truck stops at the loading dock and gets unloaded. Well, if you don't have dock workers, you're going to, or enough dock workers, you're going to get little or nothing off of the the mechanism, which is what insulin is, so you end up with high blood sugar as there's less and less chromium. Uh, so that's why Mertz was so excited. And there was another uh, doctor at this, the same year, 1959, who had set up a trace mineral laboratory named Dr. Henry Alfred Schroeder, um, who is one of the most published uh, scientists of the 20th century. He's very little known, but everybody knows, you know, salt causes high blood pressure. Well, that came from Schroeder. He worked with NASA, and so he was setting up uh, a trace mineral laboratory, which sounds impressive for nutrition, but that wasn't his purpose. He was a toxicologist. So he started with three, 
Cadmium, and most people today know cadmium is a heavy metal, causes a lot of problems. Lead, everybody knows lead's not good for you. And chromium, because when he set up his labs, it was just prior to chromium being established as a nutrient. But hexavalent chromium was known, and it's, today it's heavily regulated. You can't even accidentally get exposed to it. Toxic. Yeah. Uh, the movie Aaron Brockovich, when there's a company was letting it get into the water supply. Um, so some people, some, some smart person who thinks they're smart will tell me, you have to be careful, that could be toxic. Right. Well, not, I, and I get that a lot when people call in and talk about, you know, about your chromium. Well, I mean, gee, I take that much, I could be... Uh, it, anyway. It's not even possible in a food form. Correct. Well, we'll get into that, yeah. So uh, here Schroeder was looking and doing lab experiments with animals, and he set a new record when he was working with his chromium subjects, a new record for longevity. The only change in the lab animals he was testing were those that were not getting versus those who were getting chromium. And they set a, a record for longevity for those species of mice and rats in which he gave chromium. That was early 60s. And he went, oh, whoa, wait. Um, that caused attention because he's looking for bad effects. And here he had a longevity record. So he, he actually began to get more interested in nutrition. He was still a toxicologist. But uh, one valuable book, if you can find it, anybody, if you can find this, from 1975, The Trace Elements in Man by Dr. Schroeder, um, he wrote at that time in 1975 how excited he was about the work of, Sh of Sh Klaus Schwartz and Walter Mertz because what they discovered in their excitement was for 10 years they tried to work with chromium with the benefits that they saw with it and it didn't work. Because the only form of chromium available then, and still on the marketplace now, is chromium chloride. Well, the absorption rate of chromium chloride, which is just a rock mineral, it's ground up, the absorption rate is less than one half of one percent. So that's right next to nothing. So they found it didn't work except in a food form. And the truth is, all nutrients in food are better than any other form. Sometimes the difference is greater with some nutrients than it is with others. With no nutrient is that difference greater than it is with chromium. So they figured out this won't work. So they started working with how to incorporate it into a growth structure, how to culture it. And it took them the better part of 10 years to do that. So Schroeder wrote in his excitement about chromium, Schroeder actually um, had the highest award from the American Heart Association, the George Brown Award, and was renowned because of salt, which people don't know his name, but everybody knows his research. All the medical protocols today that are used are still based on his research. Well, he wrote in 1975, the cause of heart disease is a lack of chromium, period. Now, I'm here to tell you that he overstated the point. It's, it's the predominant cause. It's not the only cause, but it is the predominant aspect. So he wrote in this book how excited he was that they were very close to perfecting this system that would make chromium available and how it would change things. Well, it does change things for the few people that know about it. And that's where I came in the late 70s. Everybody in my, di in my family, my dad's side, my mother's side, even my younger siblings, everybody, my cousins, everybody's diabetic because you know, it, you know, it runs in families. It runs in families because families eat the same way. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. They, you eat the dietary that causes this. What is that dietary? Refined bleached white flour, which goes along with refined bleached white sugar. Sugar cane is very rich in chromium. When they make white sugar, 99% of the chromium is removed. Okay. Whole grains are rich in chromium. When they refine it into a white bleached flour, 91% is removed. So literally the most removed nutrient from the foods most Americans most commonly consume, according to a recent survey from the Department of Commerce, the most, the most removed nutrient is chromium. Well, it's necessary for blood sugar metabolism. Why is diabetes continually on the rise? Chromium has been removed for more than 100 years because in 1900, Americans began to switch to refined flour and refined sugar, about 10 pounds per person per year then. And it has increased in each decade. The last figure I saw was more than 150 pounds per person per year. So when you eat that way, as most Americans do, not only do you not get the chromium that you need, 
you actually lose chromium from, from your tissues that are there meant to last a lifetime in mm -hmm. times of famine or that we, we've been built or designed or come through evolution, however you want to look at it. Schroeder was so excited, he did a tissue analysis of Americans and compared it to Southeast Asians, those in the Middle East, and those in Africa on their traditional diets. And he found as teenagers there was a little bit of a drop. This was back in 1970. He, uh, he found in Americans at the age of 40 that almost a quarter of Americans had no detectable levels of chromium. Couldn't even find it. Uh, whereas other cultures had a slight drop. So he was really big on chromium. Uh, and he had the, the credentials to talk about it. Now he's been gone for 40 years now. but uh, So much of my research came from Schwartz, Mertz, uh, from uh, from Dr. Schroeder, and then when I came along to find this food form and to see how much better that it was utilized, you know, twenty fold, fifty fold that the body would utilize it. Uh, there are a lot of other chromiums out in the marketplace now besides chromium chloride, and they'll brag about six hundred percent greater absorption. Well, most people aren't real sharp on their math, but you, real quickly, 600% of 0.3 is a little under 2%. So, Chris, you know, as a whole food form, why do you pick an eight response over, let's say, and you know, beat up in a new chapter or, or some of the other products? Because I know some, they say, I, I'm very careful to tell people, make sure it's a whole food form. It says it on the bottle because a lot of them will be, quote unquote, food based, but actually there's, synth there's a synthetic in there, and uh, so they're not. So if you could briefly tell us why you uh, prefer innate response, uh, GTF chromium. Well, it's, it's the science that's there and, and the extra steps that they take in the growth process. The other companies take some shortcuts, which I didn't know that maybe innate does overkill until about 15 years ago when I saw a comparative of an independent researcher, a, a professor at University of Pennsylvania, Scranton, where he had compared the uh, bioavailability of the various types uh, in the marketplace. And he found that the, the acceptance in the human body of the innate version was twice that of New Chapter. Uh, and I later saw New Chapter run full-page ads that, you know, ours has been found to be 60 times others. Well, that was true. They were comparing to synthetics. But when I saw that, I, I had to laugh because I didn't, I didn't know until I saw Vincent's work. But when I saw them bragging about how much better theirs is than everybody else, well, they didn't mention innate because the innate was actually twice as good as theirs. So I tell people, the other whole food ones are good. They're very good. And they're much better than everything else. But they're only half of what innate is. Chris, how would, how would somebody take it with whether they're uh, already full, full on type two diabetes or pre diabetic. How would they take this supplement? Uh, well, the beauty of chromium is it's not just a sugar issue. It's actually we've since found it's a uh, it en enhances increases the metabolic efficiency of protein metabolism of lipid or fat metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism. In a, in other words, everything you eat. Okay, so. Uh, there's not a real big difference. Uh, we actually have human studies the U.S. government did in the 1960s, and they found 205 to 290 micrograms daily, quote, maintained chromium equilibrium, which in plain language means that's how much it took so that you didn't lose more than you used. Um, so ever since I saw that back in the late 70s, I've told people, take 100 mic these are 100 microgram tablets i've told people to take 100 micrograms three times a day if you're at the 205 Morning, noon, night sort of thing yes okay and i've told people don't stack them up because people say i just take three at a time right well you're always better to space things i mean you don't eat all your food in one day at breakfast and then don't eat all day you won't get as much out of it for one thing body more absorbed. Yeah. okay but in the case of chromium it's even more important uh because many and many nutrients you can stack up Chromium, you can only use so much at a time. So basically, if you take two of these, you're going to get about one and a half out of it. You're going to waste half of it. Okay. So I tell people take one three times a day. 
Because if you're at the 205 end of the spectrum and you're getting 300, you've got some to build up those decades you know, long deficiencies. If you're at the 290 end, you can still get a little bit extra to rebuild it. And um, sometimes people that have issues, I'll tell them to take one four times a day to get some extra. Take one at bedtime also. That might be someone who's pre-diabetic or diabetic. Well, Chris actually actually has a book. Uh, it's all Nutrition and You about chromium. And uh, I'd highly recommend that you can go to our website, choose to be healthy.com, check it out. I believe it's $10, but yeah, immense amount of uh, information on, on chromium. And we just barely touched uh, on it. And I hope we can do another video down the road of a little more in depth, but uh, at least people get a, a little knowledge mm -hmm. here of, 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 of you and, uh, and this amazing book. Uh, again, you go to choosebehealthy.com and Chris Barr, thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan.